Hey fellow producer, this is Onesto and I make tutorials that motivate you to create. In this video, you're gonna learn what a modulator is, why do you wanna use it, and then we'll take a closer look at three of Bitwig Studio's modulators, and then I'll finish it off with giving you an exercise that you can do at home to help level up your modulator skills in 20 minutes. All right, let's look at some modulators from Bitwig Studio 3. So first things first, what is a modulator? A modulator is something that changes parameter based on some kind of rule. What I think you'll quickly notice is that modulators like to really tinker and just augment any plugin you have, given it new features, new capabilities, so they can be pretty powerful. So why would you want to modulate? Why would you, like, why bother? Well, number one, they, they add a lot of interest and movement, so your sounds will feel a whole lot less static and boring. Another thing it does is that it adds uniqueness. Your sounds, your, your sound design will sound more professional that way. And everyone wants to know how to make their music sound unique and different. And this is one way that can lead you there. And then the third reason I think modulators are great is that it will make your sounds come to life. Since parameters will be morphing and changing your sound over time, the, the sound will just feel more alive. All right, so let's have some fun and get right to it. All right, before I get into uh, the modulators, let me just show you the loop that we're gonna be playing with. Cool, just try to make it sound 80s, I suppose. Uh, but we're gonna be messing around with modulators on this polysynth here, and then a serum preset that I call some dreamy keys. So here's the polysynth, uh, how it sounds on its own. So besides the sidechain, it's um, pretty static. It's a static sounding saw, and although it's like harmonic and rich and fun and all that stuff, um, we can make it sound more alive and more interesting. So what I wanna use is a random modulator right here. The way you add a modulator, just click one of these plus signs, um, search for the modulator you want, and it'll just plop right in. And the random modulator, what it does is that it is changing a parameter uh, based on randomness. Uh, and it's gonna be almost like a like a LFO that is moving randomly, and you can affect how fast it goes and how much it, and the depth and all that stuff. Um, so let's just take a look at the random modulator panel here. If you're ever confused, like what is this thing? I don't know what's going on. If you click show help, it pulls up the, the entire uh, modulator panel and it kind of shows you really clearly what each um, thing does. So frequency is uh, how fast the, the modulation will be happening. Um, smooth is gonna be a, a, like determining if it's gonna be almost like a sine wave changing like smoothness or just like choppy, like uh, up and down, almost like a square wave. This feedback knob is gonna be determining if uh, you're gonna have like repeating patterns or like uh, small changes over time. So positive values will give you changes over time. Negative values will lead to repeating patterns. There's a few other controls here that you can read on your own, but these main ones, these, these, these top ones here are the ones that I mess around with most of the time. All right, let's start assigning the random modulator to the polysynth there. Some things that I like to assign it to are pitch. Just having the slightest little, like, like random, the random modulator, excels a lot when it's just like by subtle amounts uh, or extreme amounts. I feel like either subtle or extreme is like kind of what you want with the random modulator. I like to look for parameters that are gonna help my sounds feel a bit more alive. So uh, the pitch on both oscillators, just by the tiniest amount, I like to affect it. So now it sounds like this. See, so you can hear that detune happening. That's kind of nice. And uh, something else I like to do is assign it to this uh, pulse width, once again, by tiny amounts, small amounts. Now here's how it sounds. Go on, increase the bottom one. Cool, and you can see visually that the oscillators are, are changing shape, which is pretty cool. All right, I'm just gonna go for a few other things. I like messing around with unison, get some more detune. Here, I'll just play it on loop. Cool, so it's sounding a lot better. I'll just do a little before and after. So no random. With random. Yeah, with the randomness, it just has like an extra dimension of interest to it, which is great. Um, oh, and hey, you ever wonder why there's these little effects boxes in, uh, in, in, in some of the plugins? Well, it's so that you can assign these modulators to the effects that are nested inside that effects box. So a couple things I want to assign it to is the chorus mix right here, the chorus width. So once again, just giving more life and variation. 
Let's pump it up some more. Yeah, so all of a sudden, um, a really static, stale sounding polysynth is sounding uh, much more interesting. And in case I haven't really like described what these modulators are doing, so I click this little like arrow thingy, you can then drag up or down a knob and that's gonna be the amount that you drag it, signified by this like white line is gonna be showing you how far random is gonna be adjusting it. So if I just have it by a little bit, then random is just gonna be going back and forth and let random movements and increments and directions. If I have it pushed back a lot, it's gonna be doing a whole lot more. Let's try to push random to extreme mode, like extreme settings. Let's just see what on earth this sounds like. Let's try this out. Yeah, that's not sounding bad at all. Let's bring up my unison some more. That's a little too much. Great, I think that's sounding uh, a little wonky, but for the sake of this demonstration, let's just go with it. All right, really quick, I'm gonna show a list of parameters that you can apply random to. You can try it out yourself. I find that using random very subtly usually works, but there are some scenarios where having random push to extreme settings like we, what we just tried could sound pretty interesting. All right, so this next modulator I wanna mess around with is Vibrato. This is a new modulator that's been introduced, I think in the latest update. Uh, so you can see right here, this, it's just going on and it's assigned to the mod wheel on your uh, keyboard. So as I push up, you can see that the dot is now going like more depth with that uh, alpha right there. What I found so far is that vibrato is not as versatile as random. I, I feel like there's fewer things that you wanna apply vibrato to, but what vibrato does is still unique and really interesting. So what I like to apply it to is pitch. So I'm gonna assign it to this pitch shifter here, just by a little bit. Maybe we'll try right there. Let's just hear how it sounds now. Yeah, so you can hear it. That's probably a little bit too much for my taste. Let's try again. Do a little bit less. Here we go. Yeah, that's better. Let me open this, this uh, vibrato panel here. So um, the controls are pretty simple. Once again, I'll click to show help. So you can see here, the this is like the frequency. Um, I'm gonna be also be messing around with the curve shape here, um, just to try that out. And then one thing that's pretty cool is that you can assign uh, instead of the vibrato to the mod wheel, you can assign it to pressure. Uh, so if you like press down on your keyboard, if it has aftertouch, it'll open up that that vibrato. You can also have it uh, it's like manual, but I like to have it on mod wheel or pressure. So I'm gonna adjust uh, my vibrato shape to be more angled like this, cool. And then uh, something else I want to apply vibrato to is the, um, what do you call it, the output of my polysynth just by a tiny bit so that it kind of flutters. Yeah, so you get a little bit of that flutter in the volume there. And then uh, one more thing I wanna do is to the chorus mix, another modulator on the mix of this vibrato, or the chorus, here we go. Great, so man, like, just these two modulators, we got some like funky stuff going on. So I'm gonna have them both off. We'll play static, kind of boring. We added randomness. So now it has more like timbre variations and then vibrato. Of course, I gotta move the mod well. So once again, here's a list of other parameters I think you can apply the vibrato to, um, since vibrato could be attached to a mod wheel, it's a fun thing to use for buildups um, and for flourishes. I love using a vibrato modulator for that. All right, so now let's move on to our next uh, instrument here, which is some dreamy keys. This is what it sounds like. And so far I have a random knob, uh, a random modulator already be, being uh, affecting a few parameters up here. But what I want to show you now is what the ADSR modulator can use. This ADSR modulator is um, very straightforward. You have your ADSR shape here that you can control by clicking and dragging these knobs here, or these little points, or affecting these knobs. Uh, and then this, I believe, determines like the amount of the effect on um, one of your parameters here. So there's a few things that I want to apply this uh, modulator, ADSR modulator to. And it's not going to be in the, the plugin itself, it's going to be in some of these effects here. 
So I have this animate plugin um, right here. And let's see. So when you scroll through this thing on Bitwig, like it's hard to, you know, sometimes it's hard to find the parameter you're looking for. So what I'd like to do, just click whatever, whatever it is you want to affect and it'll pop up right here. So now I'll collect my ADSR and I want, whenever I you know, hit a key, I want it to push up the punch amount. All right, I mean, I did another one here, ignite, which is like uh, adding some, I think really saturation to it. Boom. So now let's just play the streaming key and you'll be able to see the effects in the plugin itself. All right, that's way too much. <laughs> Cool. So besides applying this ADSR modulator to like plug in the stuff, one thing that you can do in Bitwig, which starts to get like crazy with possibilities is that you can have modulators affecting other modulators. Whoa. But before I get into this last tip, um, would you please, uh, I, I want to know if you want me to make more videos about Bitwig's modulators. So if you can just hit the like button, um, that just communicates to me that I should make more of these kind of videos. And I have a question that I would love for you to answer. Uh, what are some parameters that you'd like to apply? Uh, modulators too, because I still am learning about this. Um, so I want to learn from you. Just let me know in the comments. All right, let's show off how you can modulate modulators. So I'm going to have ADSR modulator affecting some of these parameters here in random. So now whenever I hit a key, it's going to make things feel more random or kind of have like a moment of extra craziness. So I'm going to click this and have it affect uh, the rate. I'm going, to, I'm going to bring down the rate here. I'm going to have it also affect the smoothness, the, the feedback. I think that's good. All right, so now let's play the, the Dreamy Keys. So you can see how this like random LFO is going crazy now because of the ADSR. Cool, so having both these modulators, once again, just helps things feel a bit more interesting. It helps it feel more alive and, and that's pretty cool. So before I talk about how to level up in 20 minutes, let's just play the whole loop and hear it all over again. Great, that was fun. If you made it this far in this video, thanks so much. But before I close this whole thing off, I wanna give you an exercise that you can do at home to level up in 20 minutes. First, set a timer for 20 minutes. Um, and in these 20 minutes, your goal is to start becoming familiar with, with what modulators can do. But by the end of this 20 minutes, I really want you to be failing as hard as you can so you can see where those breaking points exist. This isn't a time to like play it safe. This is a time to experiment and go crazy. Um, but also try to learn at the same time. So after you set that timer, open up one of Bitwig stock uh, synth devices, try out Polysynth or Polymer, since I think to look like the most straightforward to use. And then what you wanna do is take one of the modulators that we talked about today and uh, apply that modulator to one to three different parameters. Now add on a stock Bitwig effect to the effect chain, uh, like reverb or distortion, just something that will add a new dimension to your sound. And once you do that, add on another modulator and then apply that to one of three parameters in the synth or to that new effect you put on, um, or even to the first modulator itself. Then add on another Bitwig stock effect and see what you can do with that. And then finally add on another modulator and see how many parameters you can apply it to until the sound sort of just collapse in on itself. So by the end of that 20 minutes, you should have uh, a taste of what modulators can do. And hopefully you're a little less confused by them and instead you're uh, starting to get more excited about the possibilities of, of this really unique Bitwig feature. And remember, this is gonna be one big giant experiment, meaning that you should be failing uh, a whole lot. So give yourself you know, the time, the permission to experiment and fail. All right, that's a closer look at three modulators from Bitwig Studio. Hope you can walk away from this video feeling inspired and just ready to go have fun and experiment. If you wanna learn more about plugins or music production techniques, go ahead and click one of the videos here. And please consider subscribing so you'll never miss out on one of my weekly music production tutorials. Hope I can see you again in the future. Later.